thank you guys for coming out here on a uh, cold December uh, afternoon and morning. I really do appreciate your time. I know there are other things you could be doing. Mayor, I want to thank you. It's been a great partnership working with you on behalf of the people of uh, Fort Wayne, and uh, you, you're one of the good guys. You thank know? you. And so I've often said that other than being President of the United States, being mayor is the toughest job in America, and you're doing it very well. And so I want to thank you for, for everything. Uh, former Mayor Moses is over here. He's doing a great job in the uh, House representing one of the districts up here, Phil Giaquinta. Thank you for coming. I've known, I am feel like an old timer. I've known the Giaquinta family now for at least two generations. <laughs> and, uh, you know, Jeff and so many others, thank you all for, for being here today. So let me just uh, be short and sweet. I'll be happy to answer your questions. Um, I wanted to come back to Northeast Indiana to just say thank you uh, for the privilege of representing the people of our state and for the opportunity to get things done to help Hoosiers. I think in particular about the jobs we've created and uh, we've saved over the years, including a couple of hundred out of ITT I focused on. Very important. Uh, several million dollars we've gotten from the Innovation Center here in Allen County to help create and start new jobs and businesses. I love going out to uh, uh, IU, uh, uh, IPFW and seeing the results of the 21st Century Scholars and the other things that we've been able to do to make a college more affordable for middle class families. Just all the things over the years that uh, working with a great group of people I've been privileged to try and accomplish on behalf of the folks of uh, our state. And then just a lot of personal memories uh, coming back. I remember being honored at the uh, Mad Anthony one year where you raise funds charitably here for the hospitals in town, right? And the only problem with that is that I had to play golf in the tournament the next day and embarrass myself by think, you know, duffing around 18 holes with that Sycamore Hills, but I enjoyed it. And, I remember when I was a young boy with my father going to Auburn for the uh, antique car uh, parade they have there and being, you know, just in Angola, Steuben County and other places, Kendallville and uh, over in, uh, no, I remember having my first uh, pork burger over at the Noble County uh, <laughs> County Fair. A guy named Jim Coons was the long time uh, county chairman over there. He just kind of, he introduced me to the joys of pork burgers. And so, uh, in any event, so many uh, going to a turkey festival in Whitley County. I could just kind of go on and on reminiscing, but suffice it to say, from the time I was uh, a young boy, I've come, I've loved coming up here to Lake Wawasee and being with friends, and it's been the privilege of my life representing the people of our uh, state. Two final things, and I'd be happy to answer questions. Number one, although my time in the Senate may be drawn to a conclusion, uh, my devotion to our state uh, has not changed. I'm looking forward to coming back uh, many times. As a matter of fact, I've already got a speech scheduled at Notre Dame uh, for February 21st, and I'm bringing my son so he can see the uh, university, and he's also going to be uh, visiting with the lacrosse coach because he's a pretty good lacrosse player, so we'll see where that goes. Uh, they both asked me whether we can uh, go down to uh, Bloomington to watch the old Oak and Bucket game next year. I told them we can absolutely do that. So uh, count on me to be, uh, look, I'm a, I'm a Hoosier, fifth generation. And that's something that's never going to change. Uh, so the final thing I'd say, when I was bragging about you while you were doing the interview over there. I was doing the same thing by you. Oh, that's kind of, we got a mutual admiration society going. And I remember working with you when you were mayor and the, the wonderful job you did. And so proud of what you're doing to represent us in the uh, state legislature. Final thing I'd say is that uh, uh, I attended a conference several years ago. And uh, they asked each of us to stand for about one minute. And just to say what we'd learned about what was really important in life. And so each of us were kind of, you know, standing and offering a few recollections. And this one woman, I'll never forget, her name was Stella Ramey. She, stood, she was probably in her early 80s. And she stood up and she just said very simply, she said, During the course of my long life, I have learned that what really matters is who I love and who loves me. The rest, that's just background music. So I've been privileged to uh, love the people of our state for 55 years, and I'm privileged and honored that that affection has been returned. And uh, I want to thank you all for the privilege. So having said all, well, thank you. Now I've said, and I will throw it open for questions, but to put things in perspective, I am two years older than my father, believe it or not, when he left the United States Senate. However, I am still seven years younger than the average senator. So, <laughs> so there's still some good, uh, some st still some good work to be done, and some additional chapters to be written. 
And again, I just want to thank uh, all of you. So any questions from our friends in the press? Yeah. Yes, sir. Senator, you just said that there's a lot of good work to be done. So what is your plans after um, January 5th? Well, you know, I've still got a couple weeks, active weeks, in the Senate, so I'm looking forward to representing us there and working. It reminds me, my final day as governor, I had five public appearances, and I'm finishing in the Senate pretty much the same way, working right up until Christmas Eve and all that. Right it. So I think I'm probably going to do a, a, a collection of things, probably some things in the private sector, helping to create jobs. Uh, I'd love to work with kids in an educational institution at some point because education has just always been a part of my family's uh, uh, value structure. And so I'll probably do a variety of things like that. But I'm, I'm just intent on making sure that whatever I do, I get home frequently and uh, because this is the place that we are. Any chance residents of Indiana will get to vote for you again in, in any office? By the way, we're keeping, our, we're keeping our, uh, our, our home in Indianapolis. So, And my wife asked me, wouldn't you be interested in this? Uh, I think it's fair to say we are probably the only family in Washington, D.C. that flies the state flag of Indiana over our front door. At least I've not seen another one. And so it's been there for 12 years, and Susan told me the other day, she said, you know, it's looking a little tattered, because it's been out there through, you know, 12 winters and 12 summers and all the wind and all that kind of stuff. Do you think you can get another state flag? I've got one in the truck. Well, you know, I do. well she said, now, it's, we got one of those flag poles that, you know, comes off the front of the house, so it's, it's got to be one with a sleeve on it, not the one you kind of go up the pole. So. I said, dear, I'll see what I can do. So maybe when I can work with you, because we want to keep flying that state flag <laughs> so that people know there's a little bit of Indiana there in Washington, D.C. So um, I haven't made any final decisions, but it's probably going to be a collection of things in the private sector and uh, still uh, some things to help people. Any possibility of run for any office in the future? Well, I don't know. Uh, I wouldn't rule it out. I don't have any plans right now. Uh, you know, our uh, new senator coming in was in the Senate and then was out for 12 years and is now coming back, so that kind of thing can't happen. But um, I just don't know, to be quite honest. You mentioned you, there's plenty of time left, or there's work time left in the Senate this year. Are there any bills you hope to get votes on um, for that new term? Well, we're getting down to the end here probably this week, so there are a lot of things I'd personally love to see us uh, have some action on that won't, but I, I'm very glad that we were able to get uh, uh, the tax bill passed to keep taxes going uh, from going up. If that hadn't been enacted, uh, taxes on literally every working Hoosier were going to go up on January the 1st. And that's never a good thing, but particularly the economy is so weak, that would have been really very damaging to business confidence, to consumer confidence. We just didn't need that. So for one of the few times in recent years, Democrats and Republicans came together and, uh, to do the people's business. I hope that becomes uh, the rule rather than the exception. Uh, now, there were in the Senate, it passed 81 to 19. Uh, the only people who voted against it were both the far right and the far left. Uh, now, the rest of us looked at it and said, would we write it exactly this way if we were in charge? No. Everybody had something they didn't like. But they stepped back and said, you know what? On balance, though, it's what's right to do, and it's certainly better than the alternative of doing nothing. So I'm glad we got that done. Uh, the things that remain to be done are, uh, well, there's a nuclear treaty we're debating with regard to Russia. Uh, that's important from a national security perspective. You know, there's an example of where Republican secretaries of state and defense have stepped up and said it's the right thing to do. Richard Luger from our state is a leading supporter of it, uh, and yet it's difficult to get through the Senate. Hard to understand the truth, so I hope we can get that done for the national security of the country. Uh, we need, we have no budget for the country. I mean, the government's going to close if nothing uh, was done. And while some people might think that's a good thing, you know, Social Security recipients wouldn't get their checks. The soldiers, you know, in, in Afghanistan and uh, Iraq would lose their support. The hospitals would close. You can't let that kind of stuff happen. So uh, we're probably going to pass a continuing resolution which will keep funding flat uh, from this year's levels, but at least will allow the government to stay uh, open. And then there will probably be a vote on something for, it's been a, a long time, uh, but uh, to deal with the health concerns of the first responders, the firemen, the policemen, and so forth, who responded to 9-11 and were exposed to a variety of toxic chemicals when they went into those uh, uh, buildings and had to inhale all that uh, debris and that sort of thing. So there may be other things, but I think at least those three things probably will get a vote. The big two are the, the keeping the government open and running and then the, the start treat. Yes. There are many times uh, I've heard you in the past look back at uh, the weeks after 9-11 as, as an exemplary occasion when partisanship was almost disappeared, not disappeared. 
you think that uh, the impetus to set the country on a course toward budget balancing is going to be able to muster something like that in uh, by well, as a matter of fact, hey, uh, um, can we get uh, this gentleman a copy of my uh, farewell speech to the Senate? Because I mentioned that. I mentioned that there were really three times when partisanship was put aside and ideological purity was put aside and people thought more like Americans than Democrats or Republicans. And I mentioned that in particular. Uh, there were two other times I mentioned as well. But yes, that needs to happen. These debts and deficits that we're saddling our children with are wrong. Uh, it's bad economically. And I think it's immoral to settle future generations with our own unpaid bills. But there is an opportunity to deal with that next year. I don't, uh, if you want to get into the weeds on this, we can. But there's something called the debt ceiling uh, will be run up against. Basically, uh, Congress and the President have to do something uh, to allow the country to borrow more money. Nobody's going to want to vote for that. The Republicans aren't going to want to vote for it because they ran against you know, increasing the debt and deficit. The Democrats aren't going to want to vote for it because they don't want to get attacked for raising the debt. And so, and yet the country, if nothing's done, the country will default, which, you know, that may sound like, oh, okay, but it, basically what that would cause would be our currency to collapse, interest rates to skyrocket. That would be hugely damaging to the economy, you know, threaten millions of jobs, thousands of businesses. Uh, it would be like the United States of America going bankrupt. And um, obviously a great nation can't do that. So uh, that is going to be the moment at which we'll have an opportunity to deal with the debt and deficit because uh, the country will require action. No one's going to want to take the action that's necessary. And yet, ultimately, it's what's in the best interest of the public. So Democrats and Republicans are going to have to come together. And rather than playing political games, figure out a way to uh, get the deficit on a path toward a better place while not allowing the country to go bankrupt. So at that, uh, you know, Wynn and Phil, you guys are legislative veterans. so. Uh, my observation is that legislative bodies usually deal with hard things when there's a deadline that can't be avoided. Is that a, is that a fair statement? Since we're all part of legislative bodies. Uh, and so it's that debt ceiling that will provide the deadline that can't be avoided that will impel people to act. And also the knowledge, a lot like this tax thing. Why did, why did, people, behave, why did people behave more sanely on this tax package? Because no one wanted to get blamed for taxes going up on every American. And that was going to happen if nothing got done. So they came together and said, OK, since something has to get done, let's work together and make sure it's a, a good thing. Same thing on this debt ceiling vote. You can't allow the country to go bankrupt. That would have calamitous consequences. So people will probably sit down and try and work through that. And I would look at what they're doing in England right now, where they have a coalition government. The Liberal Democrats and the Conservatives are governing together. And there, they've got an even bigger budget problem than we do. And they've agreed on an approach that's two-thirds spending cuts and one-third revenue. And so my guess is you'll probably get uh, some combination of spending reductions, entitlement reform, and my guess is tax reform to get rates down, but to broaden the base, to grow the economy, which will have the consequence of generating more revenue. So look to in the spring sometime that happening. So that's a long and roundabout way of answering your question. I think ultimately we will get more uh, bipartisanship to address the debt and deficit because there will be events that will require us to do that. Did that answer your question? Yes. <coughs> that was almost senatorial there. It was like many, fil <laughs> many filibusters. <laughs> um, you have some accomplishments listed out in your press release. Can you narrow it down to one accomplishment you're most proud of and then perhaps one disappointment that you wish you could have gotten got done? Well, for my years as governor, I'm so proud of the 21st century scholars. You know, when I go to the university here in uh, Fort Wayne, I always run into young people who say, you know, I couldn't go to college if it hadn't been for those scholarships. And there are now, you know, tens and tens of thousands of young Hoosiers who've been able to go to college because of that, working with the legislature. And, and that makes me feel good because they'll get better jobs, they'll have better lives. That's, that's what you call creating opportunity, you know? You invest in young people and if they work hard and they do right, then they get ahead and they pay us back. So uh, I feel, you know, very good about that. Uh, at the national level, you know, any number of things I could mention. Um, getting the right equipment for our troops who were being held, killed because they didn't have the, the, the body armor they needed. That was disgraceful. We were able to do something about that. I was able to get passed a bill that cut property taxes for hundreds of thousands of people across our state and millions across the country. Protecting our intellectual property so the Chinese and others couldn't steal it quite so readily and take our jobs. 
uh, credit card reform so that the financial institutions couldn't do some of these things to kind of rip off consumers. All those things I'm proud of. Um, uh, and none would have been possible without a lot of wonderful people helping me out. Uh, you know, things, uh, regrets that I have or things that I could do over, you know, I'm not a big one for regrets and that kind of thing, but I, I will say this. I do regret that the information that we were given before we voted on the war in Iraq turned out to just be wrong. Uh, we were told that Saddam Hussein had weapons of mass destruction, chemical, biological, and possibly a nuclear program. And when we got in there, it turned out that that just was not so. So it was not an unreasonable belief at the time, but it turned out to just not be the case. And I think that's unfortunate. And I'm just curious, politically, uh, Democrats took kind of a hurting this year. Do you have any advice for how they can get it back in, in time for 2012? Oh, uh, well, you want me to talk politics. Um, <laughs> I actually think that the two years from now will be a lot better uh, for the Democratic Party than what we just uh, went through. And I believe that for a number of reasons. Number one, I think the economy will at long last begin to be growing again, hopefully at a rapid enough rate that people will begin to feel better about their personal circumstances and about the circumstances of their neighbors and that kind of thing. The unemployment rates should start coming down. It's going to be kind of stubborn, though, because discouraged workers who aren't counted in those figures will be coming back into the workforce. And so that tends to be what they call a lagging indicator. But I would look at leading indicators like consumer confidence, things of that nature. Uh, and I, my guess is that uh, Hoosiers and Americans will be feeling better about their economic circumstances. And that tends to drive everything else. So that's, uh, that's number one. Um, number two, you know, the, the, the Republicans had a great election year. They kind of swept in, and they're now controlling a lot of things. But you can almost count on some on the extreme right to overreact, to try and go too far. And my guess is that independents and moderates in the middle who were kind of voting for a change because they weren't happy are going to say, well, now, wait a minute. That's not exactly what we had in mind. Uh, and so I think you'll uh, see that will benefit uh, the Democrats some. The extremes of both parties tend to, tend to overreact when they are in a position to control things. One other thing, and this gets a little uh, esoteric, but uh, the electorate will actually be different in two years. Midterm elections, not as many people tend to vote. Uh, in presidential elections, a much higher percentage of people tend to vote. Now, you look at the polling from this time, the Democratic Party did a lot better among registered voters as a whole than we did among likely voters. Uh, and so that meant that the more people who would come out, thank you the better off we were going to do. Well, a lot of those people will be coming out in two years. So it's going to be a broader, it can be a, a, a wider electorate, which will be more favorable to the Democratic Party. The final thing I'd say is, if the president, like he did on this uh, effort to keep taxes from going up and actually cut taxes, if he looks for ways to reach out to independents and moderates and to govern from the practical center, I think that will work very well for him, not just in Indiana, but across the country. And his Republican opponents will be having to go to places like Iowa and New Hampshire and South Carolina, where the most fervent part of that party decides who their nominee is going to be. So the, the future Republican nominee is going to have to be catering to the farthest right elements of the Republican Party. So if the president is staking out the center, well, then that puts him in the sweet spot at a time when his future opponent is kind of going to be way off over there on the right. So you add all that together, and probably a couple other things I can't remember. And I and I actually think the uh, I actually think that the election in two years will look a lot better than what we just what we just did. Through. You plan on using okay. your um, campaign war chest to help that effort? Oh, I'm going to be active helping others. I was this last time. I gave about a million and a half dollars to the state party, and was pleased to do that. And I intend to continue to help other people. I'm going to be you know, active in public life, even if I'm not on the ballot. And uh, so uh, it's just part of my part of my DNA. And I think our first order of business needs to be electing and re-electing good mayors, uh, like Tom Henry. Uh, there's a woman named Melina Kennedy who's probably going to be running in Indianapolis. I think that's a real opportunity. Uh, one of the nice things about um, that position is, and any position, particularly in, uh, mayors that come from media markets, uh, if you can have a good, competent mayor from your party who's on television on a regular basis, well, folks out there watching the news go, well, this fellow seems to be doing a good job. Well, that means Democrats must be confident. They care about the same things I do. And that tends to help the whole whole party. And we don't, one of our problems is we tend to get characterized 
uh, or caricatured rather, caricatured the way the National Party is. We need to have our own identity here in Indiana and for being pragmatic, for being for economic growth, fiscal responsibility, you know, traditional values, those kind of things. And if we carve out their, our identity, or that identity for ourselves, there's no reason we can't win a whole lot of elections. Great. Thank you all so much. I forgot to mention something, and that is that uh, for my wife's 50th, 50th birthday last year, uh, I got her a car. We purchased it in Fort Wayne, Indiana. So we <laughs> drive to Washington, D.C., a, a car purchased from Kelly here in Fort Wayne, Indiana. So I wanted to get, I wanted to get that out on the record. We're trying to support the, support the home folks.